In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between CloudWatch and CloudTrail. These are two AWS services with very similar names, but fulfill two very different functions in the AWS ecosystem. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about what is Amazon CloudWatch. So Amazon CloudWatch is an AWS monitoring service that is meant for applications. And it offers features that allow you to collect, monitor, and analyze your application's health. So those three categories are the three main things that people use CloudWatch for. Now, the reason that a lot of folks get confused with CloudWatch is that over time, it's developed a whole bunch of different features that fit within these three categories. So really, I would consider CloudWatch to be kind of an umbrella service because it has so many different functions that are kind of related, but in other ways not. So I want to spend a couple moments talking about these three areas and what Amazon CloudWatch offers in each of them. So first of all, in terms of collection over on the left-hand side, a main function of any application is collecting application logs. Application logs tell us things like when errors are occurring, uh, which is usually a good indicator of something going wrong in our application, or even if there's not anything going wrong and we just want to analyze the flow of control in our application. Logs are a critical input that allows us to analyze what is going on now and what has gone on in the past in terms of our application. So CloudWatch offers ways for you to ingest very large volumes of application logs and also lets you store them at a relatively cheap cost. So application logs are one category, but there's another category of logs, which is just general AWS service logs. So things like maintenance, errors, upgrades, things like that, that are relevant to certain AWS services. So collection is a very huge component of CloudWatch. Let's move on to monitoring. Now, in terms of monitoring, one of the big features that CloudWatch allows you to do is to create metric graphs. Now, these can range from things like CPU or memory for certain applications. This may be a relevant metric to look at, maybe something like an EC2 instance instance, for example, that's hosting maybe a REST API or a backend application. What CloudWatch allows you to do is to create these graphs and link them to these different metrics so that you can visualize the counts of certain metrics over time. So many different services in AWS emit their own default set of metrics. However, you do have the opportunity to create your own metrics. So say, for instance, maybe in your application, you call a certain dependency. Maybe you want to know how many times you call that dependency or what's the latency when you call that dependency. You can create and capture these different types of metrics, plot them on the graph, and then see how the information changes over time. You can also slice and dice your data by combining different metrics together. And then once you're done observing the metrics, another useful feature is to create alarms on those metrics. And alarms allow you to become notified whenever something out of the ordinary happens in your application for a prolonged period of time. So say for instance, if we have an elevated CPU usage, maybe above 90% for 15 minutes or so, that usually indicates that there's something wrong with our application. So we may want to set up an alarm that triggers a notification that sends us an email or sends us a text message or even pages us to let us know that something is going wrong with our application. Now, another big part of monitoring are traces. And traces allow you to drill down on certain invocations to see different profile characteristics of those invocations. So things like CPU usage, things like memory usage, disk space usage, network throughput, things like that as they relate to a particular invocation, you're able to visualize them and deep dive into each of them. Now, finally, under the analyze category, there's CloudWatch Log Insights. Now, CloudWatch Log Insights allow you to basically perform SQL style queries on your log information and do some interesting analysis on them from the data analytics perspective. So these are the three main categories. I would say most of the time you're going to be using CloudWatch is with regards to collection and monitoring of what is happening in your applications. Now, there are a couple other services or a couple other components that arguably shouldn't belong to CloudWatch that do deserve a special mention. And those two are CloudWatch rules, which are formerly CloudWatch events. And these are basically just serverless cron jobs that allow you to invoke a certain function or perform a certain action at a regular interval or at a fixed interval. And then next there's CloudWatch event bridge, which are basically just application events that you can integrate into an event bus and respond to programmatically. But arguably these two things aren't really related to CloudWatch. They just kind of evolved over time and currently still exist within the CloudWatch section of the console. So that's a little bit about CloudWatch. Now I want to move on and talk about CloudTrail. So despite having two very similar names, these two things do very different things. We learned that CloudWatch is meant for monitoring applications, but CloudTrail is very different. It is a auditing service for AWS accounts, and it allows you to analyze who performed what actions 
and when on your AWS resources. And the way the Cloud Trail makes this available to you are through trails. Now here's an example of a trail. Now we can see here that there's different events that I have listed here. So create table, update table, describe table. We see there's different times in which these three things were executed. We see the username, we see the event source, we see the resource type, a DynamoDB table in this case. Then we also see the resource name. So this is the idea with CloudTrail. It allows you to have a audit log of all of the events that are related to your AWS applications and basically everything that every user that is signing into your AWS account, what they are doing, when they're doing it, and what they are doing it to. This is the main purpose of CloudTrail, not meant for applications, but meant for auditing your AWS accounts. Now, some additional details here. There's three types of events that CloudTrail offers. The first one is management events. Management, or what AWS calls control plane events, are just the administrative type of events. So the creation of resources like a DynamoDB table or an S3 bucket, or the updating or any other modification event to those resources. That's considered a management event. Also things like sign on and sign out, stuff like that. So typically management events are relatively low volume and these management events do come automatically enabled when you create your AWS account. So if you've never gone to the CloudTrail section before, you can go and check it out now and you should see a list of different events of all the different things that have been happening in your AWS account over the past little while. Now the second type is data events. Now data events are usually in much higher volume and data events include things like queries on a DynamoDB table or invocations of a Lambda function, much more a higher volume or higher throughput. And these do not come enabled by default. You have to enable them on a particular AWS service if you wanna capture this type of information. And then thirdly, there are insights. Now insights are a special type of trails. Now insights allow you to leverage AWS's machine learning algorithms to basically detect when anything out of the ordinary is happening in terms of access or usage of your applications. So say for instance, if you have an application that typically only receives I don't know, 100 calls per hour, then all of a sudden it's receiving 100,000 calls per hour. That may raise an insight event that you can capture and potentially create an alarm on in CloudWatch if you wanted to. Now, another useful trait of CloudTrail is that there are export tools that allow you to archive data to cold storage. So maybe you have a compliance use case in your organization and you need to maintain all access to your AWS account over one year or two years or 10 years, doesn't really matter. Uh, CloudTrail gives you some very easy mechanisms to export that data into something like S3. And then from S3, you can put it into something like Glacier and that's some very, very low cost uh, retention of all of this access data over a very long time frame. Now, one other thing that I wanted to point out is that these three different types of events, management data and insights, you can create separate trails that include different portions. So you can have a trail that includes management and data, one that includes management and insights, and each of the different trails can have a different delivery uh, destination. So you can get copies of the same data if you wanted to replicate it. So that's the main idea of CloudTrail. It's meant for auditing access to your AWS accounts. So just as a quick little summary of these two things, uh, CloudWatch over on the left-hand side is a monitoring service for AWS applications. Uh, it's used primarily for log or metric analysis and also for the creation of alarms. And thirdly, there's additional features there that are meant for drilling down into your application health. And then CloudTrail is very different. It's a monitoring service for users and resources. It's useful for auditing or compliance purposes and trails allow you to capture activity and deliver them rapidly to cold storage. To learn more about CloudWatch, check out this video on the right where I walk you through the console and don't forget to like and subscribe.